What's up guys? It's Friday! I don't know why I feel the need to sing when it's What the Fitness. All right, let's see what we got this week. You know, we've been giving a lot of crap to carnivore folks, uh, low carb folks. You know what? I feel like the crazy vegan zealots. It's been a while. The carnivore people are like the really smug kid in class who thinks he's smarter than everybody else. It's just like really annoying. Whereas like the really crazy vegan zealots are like the <laughs> ex-girlfriend who will like burn your stuff in the front yard. You guys, let me know what you think. By the way, not saying all vegans. I said vegan zealots, big difference. If you have the game changers as like one of your top five documentaries of all time, you're probably a vegan zealot. All right, this is Dr. Alan Desmond. Protein that we get from plants is is high quality protein. A lot of what do you consider high quality? A lot of my patients have been told that the protein that comes from meat is of higher quality than the protein that we get from healthy plant based foods like beans, nuts, seeds, legumes, whole grains, etc. Here's the thing that is old science. That's oh, old science. Let's hear about this new science. I can always tell when somebody doesn't understand science when they say shit like old science and new science. There's no old science, there's no new science, there's just science. As we acquire more data, the consensus may change. That's called the scientific method. Old science, not new science. People who use terms like old science, new science, they're trying to get you emotionally hooked in to like some kind of conspiracy theory. Outdated nutritional science. The current science is really, really clear. If you eat lots of or only healthy whole food plant-based sources of nutrition, your body will get all the protein it needs and all the amino acids it needs to survive and thrive, but it gets better. I'm gonna stop you right there. So first off, is it possible to have a vegan diet where you get enough protein to optimize your muscle mass and athletic performance. It is, but you need to be very, very, very careful about how you go about it. And it requires quite a bit of planning. So one, the protein that's in whole plant food sources of protein, like beans, legumes, those sorts of things, is not as bioavailable as animal protein. So that's the first strike. It's usually about, depending on the source, like 50, 60, 70% bioavailable because the protein in those sources is also bound up in the fibrous plant material making it not accessible to your digestive enzymes. So a lot of that protein is gonna be wasted in your stool. Now that being said, you can just eat more protein or more protein from plant sources to overcome that. But the other downside is plant sources of protein tend to be lower in branched amino acids, they tend to be lower in essential amino acids and tend to be lower in leucine. And leucine is the amino acid that I studied for my PhD where we very clearly showed that different sources of protein even at the same total protein intake could differentially affect muscle protein synthesis and muscle mass based on their leucine contents. My research was in rats, just to be straight up, but it was later validated in some human studies from people like Dr. Stu Phillips. We fed same total protein intake, either from wheat, soy, egg, or whey. And we found that egg and whey were better for increasing muscle anabolism than wheat and soy. If we got the total protein intake high enough, you could get wheat and soy to where they were just as good as egg and whey, but it required about 20 to 40% more total protein. So if you're gonna be vegan, one, you're gonna have to consume more protein because you're gonna lose some of it in this protein that's bound up in the plant material. And two, you're gonna have to consume more because the protein you're getting doesn't have as high quality amino acids in it. You're not gonna have the same concentration of leucine. Like for example, the leucine content of wheat is about 6.5 to 7%, whereas the leucine content of something like whey can be 10, 11, or even 12%. Now you have some sources of isolated proteins like corn protein, like if you isolate out corn protein, very high in leucine, but frank deficient in other amino acids. So on the whole, plant sources of protein are not as good for muscle anabolism. Now you can eat more plant protein to make up for that. The problem becomes at a certain point, if you're trying to get two 250 grams of protein a day, for example, like if you're someone like my size and you're trying to max out anabolism, you also get sufficient amount of calories with that because they come with carbohydrates. And in the case of nuts, they come with fats. So is it possible? Yes, it just requires quite a bit of planning. And for most vegans, if you wanna get enough total protein in, you're probably gonna have to supplement with some kind of isolated plant source of protein, like a soy protein isolate, because of the popular sources of protein, soy isolate is probably the best. I would argue that potato protein isolate has a greater content of 
essential amino acids and a greater leucine content, but it's very hard to find isolated potato protein isolate. This guy's trying to make it sound like, hey, just eat plant-based sources and you'll get enough protein. Yeah, you'll get enough to survive. You're not gonna die and keel over, but is it gonna be enough to optimize muscle mass if you're not being incredibly regimented and targeted with it? Probably not. It gets better than that because the current nutritional science is clear. Plants are the preferred source of dietary protein. In fact, the more- When people use certain terms, one of the ways to be a human BS detector is ask them what they specifically mean by that. So when you say plants are the preferred protein source, what do you mean by preferred? What objective measurement would you use to determine that plants are the preferred protein source? Because I would argue that digestibility and bioavailability would indicate preferability in terms of like how an organism evolved. Like if we were meant to be like cows and mostly eat plant sources in terms of grass, we would have been ruminants. Or we would have had digestive systems similar to other animals that get all or most of their protein from plant sources. We pretty much are omnivores. If you look at human beings and you look how they evolved, and you look across the vast areas that they inhabited, we evolved to be able to use many different food sources. Plants, animal, carbohydrates, the whole deal. This idea that plants are the preferred source, I'm not gonna say that meat or animal products are the preferred source, but I also don't know what he means by preferred. The more plant protein you consume, the more likely you are to have a longer and happier and healthier life with lower rates of heart disease and high cholesterol and serious gastrointestinal problems like uh, Crohn's disease, uh, uh, colon cancer, diverticular disease, fatty liver disease. So this is another good indicator that somebody's really like bought into a certain sort of like zealotry or narrative. Their approach is the cure-all for everything. No more heart disease, no more cancer, no more digestive disorders. You can get jacked and muscular too. Like, I'm sorry, there's no panacea. What he's saying is correct insofar as a, a correlation study show people who eat higher amounts of plants tend to live longer, have less amount of cardiovascular disease and cancer. But what he's not covering is that's not really from the plant protein per se. That is more so because they're consuming less overall calories. The research shows that vegans and vegetarians consume less overall calories than omnivores. They consume more fiber, which fiber in and of itself, for every 10 gram increase in fiber, there is a 10% decrease in the risk of all cause mortality from heart disease and cancer. So just the fiber can explain some of this stuff. And when we look at one of what I think is one of the best cohort studies on meat intake and fruits and vegetables, what they found was that at the highest levels of meat intake, with also the highest levels of fruit and vegetable intake, there was no association with meat and cancer. That those people who ate high levels of meat, but also high levels of fruits and vegetables, had the same risk of cancer compared to people eating low amounts of meat and high amounts of fruits and vegetables. What that says to me is that the high meat intakes and their association with cancer, heart disease, and those sorts of things, that's not because of the meat, it's because they just eat an overall lower quality diet because people don't eat things in isolation. But if you eat an overall high quality diet, that also includes animal products, probably don't need to worry too much. The exception to that may be like processed meats. There may be some specific aspects of processed meats that may be carcinogenic. We don't know for sure, but it's possible. But in terms of unprocessed meat or minimally processed meat, based on the data, it is more of an issue of what those people aren't eating than what they are. And plus, the other aspect is most people's sources of meats aren't like lean beef or chicken breast. It's fried meats and hamburgers and hot dogs and those sorts of things. So people who are eating high amounts of fruits and vegetables with also high quality animal protein, again, same risk for cancer as people eating low amounts of meat and high fruits and vegetable intake. But diet quality, not just the meat. There's just something about that cholesterol-free, low saturated fat, fiber packed sources of plant protein that our body just loves. So I'll end by saying that I agree with what he's saying at the back end, that plant based sources of protein are high in fiber, low in saturated fat, low in cholesterol. I'm not sure dietary cholesterol matters. Saturated fat probably matters and fiber definitely matters. So that's a good reason to consume plant-based sources of protein, but it doesn't mean you have to omit animal based sources either. If you're somebody who is a vegan for ethical reasons or environmental reasons, I'm not gonna get into whether or not I agree with those, then that's fine. But this idea that you should just be completely plant-based because it's overall healthier, I don't think the research supports that. I think the research does support eating high amounts of fiber and plant-based foods, but I think you can do that while also eating animal-based sources if you choose to and still be plenty healthy. And his comments about plant-based being preferred by the body, just no evidence to support that. All right, guys. 
Hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, make sure you like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel, and click the links in the description. I'm out.